Second. With that, we'll call this meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. We do have an agenda before us. Are there any changes to that agenda? If not, we'll operate under that agenda. We'll move then to agenda item number two, which is to consider the approval of the minutes of the work session that was held, as well as the regular meeting that was held on June 25th, 2019. The council does have the minutes of both of those meetings. Are there any corrections? Move approval. I'll second. Motion by Craig, seconded by John to approve the minutes of both as they have been presented. We'll move to a vote. Close the voting. And the motion does pass. We'll move then to agenda item number three, which is the consent agenda. We'll bring the items on the consent agenda up on the screen. And they include uh, Consider the approval of the 2020 regular city council dates, times, and locations. Consider the application for on sale intoxicating liquor license for Marshall Area Chamber of Commerce for an event July 24, 2019. Consider the approval of a temporary 3.2% malt liquor license for the VFW post 742. Consider the vacation of the utility easement in Westwood Acres uh, Plat 1 and received a petition for the vacation of utility easement and call for a public hearing. Consider the approval of the resolution authorizing the uh, PFA, which is Public Finance Agency, to purchase the GO Revenue Note uh, 2019A, providing for its issuance and authorizing the execution of a bond purchase and project loan agreement for the note. Consider the approval of the transient merchant license for Southwestern Advantage. And then finally, consider the approval of the bills and the project payments. So is there any item on the consent agenda any member of the council wants removed for purposes of separate discussion? Was number eight. Okay, any other item? Move approval of the remaining consent agenda. Second. Motion by Craig, seconded by Russ. Discussion on that motion? If not, we'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting. And the motion passes. We'll move then to agenda item number eight. Uh, agenda item number eight is the, uh, uh, the resolution related to the public finance agency um, actions. Jim. I just had this removed because even though I voted against the contract award at the time, since the council did support this, I want to say I'm going to support this because we need it done. And I just want to express to the public notice, even though I voted against the contract award, I am going to support the bond issuance to keep the project moving forward since that was the choice of the majority of the council. Right. Um, Sharon, you want to, as long as we're on this, or maybe Annette, explain a little bit about the, the bond issuance mechanism in that, you know, public finance agency is issuing the, the bonds um, um, for the purpose of this project in the city of Marshall. Right, I, while Annette gets up here, we did get confirmation from the Public Facilities Authority that they are going to provide the financing for this. It is a PFA loan of 20 years and they did lock us in at a 1% interest rate, which is one of the discussion items about awarding the bid when we did is to ensure that we had that lower interest rate. They estimate that the interest savings of 1% in comparison to market rate financing will save local taxpayers uh, about $1.5 million. And uh, I'll have Annette explain a little bit about the resolution to initiate the PF loan process. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So the PFA loan, um, resolution you have before you I believe it's in three different parts um, I don't speak legal so I'm not going to get into details on it um, but by approving proving the resolution we are doing the contract um, with PFA which is a separate item and then also accepting the note amount um, it's a little bit different than in your normal bonding and is my understanding that we are able to pay this 
um, off early, whereas bonds, you're kind of locked in unless you have the, the callable rate. Um, so it's just a little bit more flexible with, with the PFA and like Sharon had mentioned with the interest rate being lower. Um, so once the resolution passes and all of the documents are signed um, by PFA and by the city, um, it's our anticipation to have a closing date of July 25th. Um, so we can have our first um, draw request by August 15th. So. Thank you, and thank you, Sharon. And, uh, I think it was good, Jim, to have some additional discussion about this because it is not only complex and staff is um, uh, spends quite a bit of time, but it's also beneficial to the city. And I just have one question. You, you said this loan's at 1%, correct? Yeah. Why would we pay it off early ever? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that a 1% note? I don't think right. that would make sense. Um, anything else? Otherwise, I'll make a motion to approve it. Then. Motion by Jim, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Russ. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. We will close the voting. And the motion does pass. We'll move then to agenda item number 11, um, Project Z70. This is a South High Street, South Whitney Street, 100, 200 block alley improvement project. Uh, the action would be the resolution receiving the report and calling for the public hearing. Glenn. Thanks, Mayor and Council. The uh, item I want to bring to your attention is the physical part where it does say we will be uh, assessing the project in accordance with our policy. The policy does state for alleys to be assessed 100%. We will be uh, going forward that way now. There, there has been some commitment for uh, previous projects for some of the grading work underneath the concrete alley to be uh, participated in. So we'll, we'll use some of the uh, historic um, methods that we've used, but generally the project is assessed. We want to make sure the public is aware of that. That's all. And Greg. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Glenn, just for clarification, and I guess in looking at some of these alley projects, my understanding was is that the basic alley improvement, the city participates or, or functions that as if no different than if it wasn't paved, there is no cost to the, to the affected properties for normal maintenance by the city on alleys that are not paved. So the responsibility of the property owner is the actual cost of paving and the material to pave, correct? Yep. And also the in this case the storm sewer. Right. Yep. And that was and that was a very special and I appreciated the the residents and I know that this has been a long process for you folks in engineering also to to facilitate that and, and answer those drainage questions and try to get that resolved for the neighborhood. So thank you for all the work on that. Russ. Mr. Mayor, I would like I, just to respond to a great Mr. Schaefer's council echo on that as well because I'm, that neighborhood I think was in a hurry to get everything done and I think by getting it done hopefully this year I want to applaud the, the engineering and hopefully the contractors as well to getting it done as soon as possible. Yep. Very good. Mr. Mayor, I, I move approval of the uh, uh, project and resolution and, and uh, to receive the report and call for the public hearing. Second. Motion by Craig, seconded by Russ. Discussion? I just have a quick question on this alley. They're going to, this is going to be paid, they're, they're going to concrete, correct? You've requested concrete, and that's what we can't, we can't go away from. And that's fine. I'm just looking at it as we look at assessments, we're doing some here, but concrete actually saves the city money over the 30 years of service. because we never have to grade this alley again. So is there a way that we can... I don't want to say comp you know, not compensate, but look at, because they're saving our street department lots of maintenance, but they're bearing the full cost of this concrete alley. We actually have to take a look at the specific design. Uh, I'll give you an example. When we do concrete alleys, we're probably going to be looking at inverting the ground. And in doing that, there are several utilities across the alley, and they may be private utilities and maybe have to be relocated uh, at either the property owner's expense or the utility company's expense. So we want to make sure that the design shows all the expenses that we would expect to have on it so that they go into it with their eyes open, knowing that that has to be paid for. In the long term, what we would end up uh, suggesting that we pay for is that grading 
below the surfacing of the asphalt. So like grading a, a gravel alley today, except we would probably reshape it a little different. I don't want to get into, you know, so, the, so through years. the process, some of that cost that they, the city saving isn't going into the cost of building this alley. S simple answer. That's right. Thank you. Yep. Greg? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Glenn, just to kind of drill down a little bit on the utilities piece, because I know this has been a discussion in our alley also, in the alley that, that serves uh, the residents of the neighborhood where I live. And one thing that I want to remind staff of, and, and also, you know, out to Marshall Municipal Utilities, that a lot of that work was done in those alleys in the um, bearing of all the utilities. And the residents didn't have a voice in, in how that work was done and who the contractors were. And I think there's always an understanding in the industry that things are buried deep enough to facilitate those ty that type of work and those types of improvements. And I would offer up to the city as a whole and to our, to our entities and to the council as we consider moving forward if some of this becomes a problem the residents don't have a voice in that and to, to make them responsible personally, privately as individuals to facilitate that, I think is a disservice to our residents. And I think that as a city, in light of that, because there's arguments in these alleys that a lot of these alleys maybe had a shorter lifespan because of all the heavy work that was done in them to fulfill those projects. And I don't think anybody complains about that because they understand that we're one of the only communities that during like the wind storms uh, recently and, and uh, we're the ones that are only out of power for minutes and maybe an hour instead of days and weeks and and that value comes from all the work that that our utilities have done to, to maintain but in that that also creates potentially problems down the road for the for the property owners because I know that those projects were done expeditiously and with outside contractor work and you can't watch over every one of those directional bores and the property owners aren't gonna stand there and watch that. So I think as a city, we need to step forward and, and if there needs to be adjustments made, I think that we need to work with our utilities to do that and not put that burden on the property owner. I'll give you a good example of it. Uh, generally, the public utilities have been put in at proper depth. So what, what happens is when the electrical line runs on one side of the alley and the private property owner has hired an electrician to go from that that public utility to their house, it's many times done with a spade or a, not not as deep as it should be, and those are the things that we'll run into if we change the grade of the alley. So I I will be bringing these things up individually when the actual design gets looked at. We're going to pothole every service so we know how deep it is, so we know if there is any impact. Uh, of doing a different elevation on that alley. Uh, but I, I agree with Craig that uh, I think most people think there's service and the, pu and the public facility goes all the way to the house, and it doesn't. It's attached at the main line at the transformer out in the alley, and that's all private from there in. So it's something we have to discuss when the project comes forward. And I, and I agree with you, Common. Like, like Craig's point was, as I know, it was about four years ago that MMU hired somebody to bury all those services. Yep. I would say none of those people had a buried lineup until four years ago. Right. Or six years ago. I, wherever it was, I might be off on yep. years. It might be six years They're ago. They're all overhead. They were all overhead yep. at that point. That's, exa that's exactly what I was getting at. So at that point in time, you know. Um, MMU hired a private contractor yep. to come in and. They took the responsibility of burying those lines. That's correct. Proper down. That's exactly my point. They're probably all okay. They probably are. You're yeah, correct. But if they're not, I'm just, that's what I'm saying is, is that those, it wasn't like I hired a contractor to come and bury mine and did it on my time. That was done wholesale as part of that, that burying all the, the you know, putting all those utilities underground. And at that point in time, I think that that comes under that project management that happened. That wasn't managed by the resident. And we will certainly be discussing that. Okay. With you. All right. Yep. I make a motion to approve it. Second. Motion by Jim, seconded by Craig. Discussion? Is there already a motion? Yeah, yeah it's already on there. Oh, That's is it? I'm sorry. sorry. Yep. Yeah. I made it. Thanks, well, Dennis. is there any other discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Close the voting. And the motion passes. We'll move then to the uh, agenda item number 12. Uh, this is 
application for an exempt permit for SMSU Foundation for an event October 12th, 2019. Any questions on this? Move approval. approval. Motion by John, seconded by Craig. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Close the voting. The motion does pass. We'll move then to agenda item number 13, the um, um, which is uh, consider appointments to various boards and commissions, uh, bureaus and authorities. Earlier this evening, the um, council interviewed uh, applicant for the airport commission and based on that application and that interview, I would recommend that Larry Doom um, be appointed to a uh, term that will expire May 31st, 2022 on the airport commission. I'd offer that as a recommendation and entertain a motion to affirm. So moved. Second. Motion by Craig, seconded by um, John. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. We will close the voting and the motion passes. We'll move then to agenda item number 14, council member and mayor salaries. So between Sharon and Dennis and Kyle, you can all chime on in on this discussion as the introduction. We have a uh, language in our ordinance that says that every July we need to discuss this. There also is state statute that um, um, provide some additional clarification and perhaps contradicts some of what we have in our ordinance. So with that, Kyle. Yeah, thank you, Mayor and Council. Correct. Uh, per our charter, the City Council does need to, need to meet the first meeting in July to discuss salaries for the next year, um, which is which that language is provided in the background memo. Uh, if you continue with the memo, um, I reference state statute, which, and if you look at subdivision two, um, which states no, ca no change in salary shall take effect until after the next succeeding municipal election. We do not have a municipal election this year, so therefore um, setting a salary would not be able to take effect as historically done would be January 1 of 2020. Um, so what I am proposing with the recommendation um, would be to allow staff to review the charter language and to review the ordinance to better align with state statute so therefore we don't, do not need to meet every year. Um, but therefore meet um, maybe every other, an even numbered year, a year that ends with an election or has an election in it. Um, and we can, what we've done is at the staff level is um, the city administrator has um, gotten an opinion um, and reached out to different, um, gotten other language from different cities, how they um, structure their council and mayor salary. Um, so that we would allow us to review that and then come back with a re recommendation to the Charter Commission and to uh, amend the ordinance to the City Council, to Legislative and Ordinance Committee. Anything to One of the things I hadn't had the opportunity to do was talk to the Chair of the Charter Commission and update her on kind of some of this discussion and, and I will do that shortly. Um, we are aware of some cities that did somewhat similar to Marshall, which is set consecutive year of salary amounts. And it, it appears in the statute you can't do that. However, it hasn't been legally challenged in the other cities that did that. And so I think that's one of the directions we'd like to see the, the Charter Commission go. The other um, item I think that maybe should be for consideration is why it is in July makes makes little sense to me. It seems like if the if it is to take effect in a particular year, December might be a a good time. And I will add to this, and I'm not entirely familiar with school board member, township member salary discussions, but um, at the county level, they it takes effect the next year. They don't have to wait for an election. So uh, one of my comments to the League of Minnesota Cities is that, I mean, it just seems kind of dumb that the city council members have to wait until after an election when another governing body that's somewhat similar does not. Um, and um, we could go on and on about the rate of pay for, for elected officials. It, 
it likely isn't where it should be. That's just a personal comment from me. Um, a lot of volunteer time on behalf of elected officials, and I, I hate to see us miss out on an opportunity to get the, the pay where it needs to be for the job that you do. So hopefully we can facilitate a better process than this one by, by having the Charter Commission review it. No, 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 I think it's been summarized fairly well. Just, yeah, just a couple of comments. Um, well, maybe some reasons for the July date would be if it's approved, then you can include it in your budget. Now, I know it's not a big line item, but I mean, in your budgeting process, you'd know about the increase. And number two, if, if it's done before an election, it, it may affect the vote in election. Uh, the voters know who approved the wages, and maybe they're not in favor of it, and and that, that may affect who they vote for when when election time comes. So there may be reasons why they, they put it in July. You know, we do it in July and not wait until December after the election. The other factor to consider is if the salary is set in an opportune time before the election, maybe it would garner interest in the seats. Maybe there would be an opportunity for more interest for individuals to run for these positions, but at the rate of pay it's really difficult to do what you guys do and the time commitment you put in. But so. I don't think anybody at this table does this for the salary, so. Just Jim, Jim and I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> I donate mine all to charity. Uh, I think the, uh, we are, uh, based on this discussion, we are compliant with what the ordinance says our responsibility is, and that is to discuss, to discuss it. So we discussed yeah. it. Anything more? Do we need a motion to refer this to the Charter Commission or the? Yeah. I make a motion to refer to the Charter Commission. Second. Motion by Craig, second. No, it's by, by Jim. Motion by Jim, motion. second by Craig. Sorry, you guys Sorry. have the same here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion on that motion? At least I'm not in that one. Yeah. If not, we'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting. Motion, Glenn, did you? <laughs> I voted, I thought I did, but. Uh, but you want to reopen it? Well. How did you vote? I, I voted yes, yeah, that's fine. Okay, that motion passes unanimously, there we go. And Mr. Mayor, just for the record, John wishes he could have a haircut like Jim and I. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move then to uh, um, Commission Board Liaison Reports. Um, Greg, let's start with you. Mine have not met, Mr. Mayor. Um, Actually, let me, I, I was jumping ahead. The, uh, um, the Regional Development Commission does have their annual meeting this coming Thursday. I'll be in attendance at that. And um, so, <coughs> Glenn? Uh, the uh, Public Housing Commission met yesterday and uh, at, our, at our meeting a couple of uh, about four weeks ago, last month, I, I mentioned that uh, there's a possibility of different financing for public housing. And th the new program is called Rental Assistance Demonstration and allows public housing agencies and owners of other HUD assisted properties to convert units from their original source of HUD financing to a project based Section 8 contract. And in simple terms, basically, this is what's happening. The primary benefit of this change in financing is that properties that convert under this process are no longer restricted from securing private sources of capital financing, such as HUD loans, and that owners are therefore able to address deferred maintenance issues. So they're trying to sell this to different public housing agencies, and as I mentioned before, the, our uh, local um, public housing commission is looking at this. And uh, on the recommendation of council, uh, information regarding this program was sent to the city clerk, and I believe he forwarded that to each council member. So you have an opportunity to read through that materials. Some of it's pretty complicated materials. And, uh, but uh, I, I want to assure the council that before the Public Housing Commission takes any action on this, they will be consulting with local government, city council, and they will be conferring with residents. Because this is an important step if they take it. And, and they're taking a very cautious approach. We're seeing what others are doing. We're trying to gather as much information as we can. And, and so it's not something that um, we're, we're making uh, 
every effort to, to make a good decision here and uh, gather as much information as we can. When would the ownership change? As, as I as I know it, yeah, things like that would be changing. Yeah, and and like I said, there would be different types of financing available to you. And the concern is with future HUD financing, are there going to be big cutbacks? And uh, like I say, certain uh, public housing agencies need maintenance right now worse than our local one does, and they're having a hard time getting the financing and waiting for it. And so they, if they went through this program, um, they could get financing on a quicker basis. And I think, um, as I recall, I thought maybe like Cottonwood Public Housing is, is moving towards this and some others are. But like I said, we're gonna take a, a slow approach on this. And and uh, again, if they, a decision will be made at a later date once we're more informed about the issue. A, a couple of other quick comments on, on the Public Housing Commission. Um, we got back our audit report for two, the fiscal year 2018. They're on a, uh, a different fiscal year than the, and the city is, and we, we got a good opinion on that. The, uh, let me, just a couple of other things on this. I was gonna just explain a couple of things too about uh, what happens in the, the Public Housing Commission every month. Every month, we, we get a financial report, and it says, here's how much has spent this last month, here's your year-to-date amounts, and, he, and here's your budget. And they, so we do an analysis every month and to see how well we're doing, if we're doing better than expected or worse than expected. And then we also look at all the payables and receivables, and all the money coming in and all the money going out. And so the executive director explains every bill that was paid during the month, and, and the commission looks at those, and at the end they, they approve the report and approve the expenditures. So that's some kind of some of the mechanics that take place every every month with the public housing commission. Uh, I think that was pretty much it. The uh, planning commission will meet tomorrow. Okay. John, uh, <clears throat> MMU and EDA did, have not met since our last meeting. Uh, did have a Ways and Means uh, Committee meeting today and uh, probably future City Council meetings will have some action to take uh, regarding fund balances and uh, we had a discussion today on uh, assessment policy as well as uh, tabling the <coughs> uh, discussion on enterprise uh, auto leasing program so we're going to table that for the time being and uh, probably take that up in ways and means a little later on this fall when we get some more additional information. And Russ? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The library board met last uh, last evening. They finalized their 2020 budget and they, the joint meeting with the county and the mayor and city administrator Hanson and, and I think uh, officials from the county will be next Thursday, I believe, at three o'clock. Uh, they also are, are adopting, are going to be looking at adopting a no smoking policy. I guess they've had some considerable uh, issues with that, uh, leaving butts in the front of the building, people standing in front of the building and going into the into the other areas outside the building and smoking where, where people pass through. So the library board is going to be coming up with a policy of some sort. Uh, they referenced the county policy is that, that there's no smoking at all on the county property whatsoever and the city does not have any difference. So. They're just going to come up with their own separate policy. So, uh, police advisory board has not met. Uh, CVB met, and uh, Lauren and, and staff are there, they continue to go through the city branding update. Uh, they hope to have that all completed by year's end. Uh, the former director's uh, court date uh, will be on July 29th at 3:30. And advice from uh, the assistant county attorney. Uh, she has requested uh, impact statements from the CVB board, which we have drafted one, and other hotel uh, owners, restaurant owners, business owners, and anybody that would like to uh, draft an impact statement that could be read at that hearing on the 29th, that would get everything to the CVB prior to that date. So that's all I have. Thank you, Russ. Jim? Uh, my name is okay. We'll move then to uh, uh, council member <coughs> individual items, uh, Jim. Um, I want to start with two weeks ago when you had your council meeting, I was up or headed up to the League of Minnesota Cities Conference, which first time I've ever been there. And then just to touch on a quick point of a, I went to a breakout session on EDA and Economic Development Authority. 
And what was expressed is as we try to attract the businesses into town, it's going to cost us money. And I'll use the example. Hutchinson attracted a business in the town. I, I'm not pronouncing the name right, but something like Upnar. They make the plastic piping. They spent $900,000 in tax abatement to bring this company into town that's employed 160 people. Um, and, and that EDA director gave this, this session. He says, the thing is, you have to be prepared for that. I think Marshall has a good start in our tax abatement policy, but it's something that we got to be aware of, that businesses aren't going to come to your town unless you decide to uh, Hutchinson is competing with an outfit in California. You know, and, and that's what we have to deal with as a, as a community. So when businesses look at Marshall, we got to be prepared to, yes, we're going to have to spend money to make money, per se. And I've used that terminology in my own business. Sometimes you spend money to make money. Um, tax abatement is a good policy. You know, we, we're kind of on the cutting edge of that. Cities are just starting to use that, and that is a good policy. So I think that's something we as a city need to continue to look at and continue to give our EDA director the tools to use and we have to portray a positive influence like this this EDA director for Hutchinson said flat out said if we'd had any negativity they'd have been gone they'd be in California and he says so we have to as a city come up with a policy and we got to support those policies and the other thing I learned from that is it supports your local businesses the ones you have and I think we've done that well with with our tax abatement too for remodeling he says the cheapest tax the cheapest economic growth is your businesses in your own community. And he says, if you don't incentivize them or give them a reason to stay there, they will leave. Yeah. And they give examples of communities that lost their, their businesses. So I, I thought that was very good, and I just wanted to share that. Um, we had a lot of good other speakers, but I don't want to take up the next three hours. So, But I, I think it, it was a good conference. And with, you know, Sharon, I was there with Sharon, Annette, and Kyle. So I think we all got a lot of knowledge out of it. So I think Kyle himself even gave a presentation, which I was not at that session. I was at a different one, but I heard he did a wonderful job. So I'm going to compliment him for giving giving a class. Jim, uh, thank you, and you're be commended for taking the time to attend that too. So those are always good good sessions. So it is good, it's good networking too. I mean, yeah. our city administrators are wonderful networkers. See, so you're at work networking. I just, you know, I think I like to talk, and I do like to talk. <laughs> Yeah. But to see her networking was very impressive. And with different people, not just one person, just she did a very good job of networking, which will pay off for the city. So Sharon does like to talk when she's out networking. So. Russ? I have nothing to say to follow that. <laughs> nothing. And Jim. Or, uh, I already won. <laughs> or whatever, whatever, whatever no, we don't do a black jam. We, get, you know, we don't have enough time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> John, that happens when you get into retirement. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess a couple of things uh, I'd like to bring up is um, had a discussion earlier uh, this past week with a school board uh, member and uh, suggests that uh, we consider having a joint uh, city council and school board meeting uh, just to talk things over. A couple of things. One may come up is uh, traffic flows around that area. What do we do with the streets? Uh, what are their plans? Who does what? Uh, I know they have some discussions on who owns the street, who doesn't. I think it's just probably a good time to sit down and hash that out, <clears throat> as well as probably what's the future for the West Side uh, School Building. Uh, you know, is there anything we need to do to facilitate that, make that the best uh, option for somebody buying it or whatever you know what are we willing to do um, <clears throat> just something to get that uh, out and going um, another item is j a little bit delayed but uh, compliments on the completion of a sidewalk uh, that was done over in patriot park area kind of completed one from one sidewalk over to the other area a nice big wide uh, bike trail and sidewalk uh, some of the residents here have complimented it very nice, uh, they enjoy it, and uh, they see a lot of use on it. So just uh, told them I'd pass that on. Um, <clears throat> third item, uh, I talked a little bit about in Ways and Means. Uh, a, uh, I had an opportunity to, uh, one of the commissions I'm on, uh, the uh, state auditor uh, brought up that when you we have a committee meeting uh, like we do, such as Ways and Means, where there's three members uh, of, you know, as part of the Ways and Means, 
that we really should be dropping the seconding of a motion in order to discuss it. It can stay on if that we decide to do so uh, as a tradition or custom of requiring a second. But in a small group, uh, particularly three members in a committee, uh, just recommending that we uh, drop the requirement for a second to do a discussion. Uh, it's already a majority at that point uh, and really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So just something to consider and maybe you want to do that in uh, committee meetings or whatever. But I think uh, as we talked about a little bit earlier uh, at our meeting, if we do that, that's something that should be standardized across all the committees. Yeah, John, I think that's a, a good suggestion, uh, especially since it is the recommendation of the state auditor and it is consistent with Robert's rules. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it also makes sense. You got a committee of three, right. and it takes two to, you know, obviously that. So, I think it makes sense. So, I don't know if there's anything in the code of practices, Sharon, that would need to be altered to accommodate that change or if we could just have that. I, I agree that it makes sense to just proceed once the motion has been made. You don't need the second. And I, I don't think we need a formal policy. We just need uniformity among the commissions, the committees to proceed. Well, we'll take way. some communication to all of the commissions. Did Correct. Yeah. In, in with it? I was just going to comment that. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that at all of our committees and commissions, um, whether we follow Robert's rules or of order or not, I always feel like there's oppor ample opportunity for everyone to speak their piece. And I, I really appreciate the fact that we give members opportunities to speak and express their opinions. And I, I really appreciate that policy that the city has, the way we conduct ourselves. And one last item is uh, uh, just uh, thanks and Congratulations goes out to all those involved with the uh, 4th of July celebration out at Independence Park. It was very nicely done. Uh, thanks to the Kiwanis Club for their work in that area and what they were doing. And uh, uh, it was a very nice uh, fireworks display and really a nice day overall. The weather cooperated for a change, so that was good. Yeah, yeah, and there's a YouTube video out there someplace on this thing with uh, a nice uh, view of the fireworks. So, yes. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, John. Greg? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, the only thing I, I've got is just kind of a follow up to the garbage mattress debris conversation. I know that our uh, building department has worked very hard to to make progress on that. And I want to say that, you know, good work is never done. You know, drive around there. It must still be move out time because there's some mattress collections and some alleys be even, be, you know, behind uh, Main Street um, on the, uh, between 4th and 5th Street on the uh, Lion Street side. There's some mattresses up against the building there. And I mean, it's just amazing to me that there's such poor communication that people don't know what to do with that, that they think they can leave it on the curb or just put it out there and the garbage pixies come and pick it up and take it away. And so I, you know, just I encourage the, our folks to continue to work on that. And again, I would like to uh, see that we move forward and encourage our staff to have that internal, make sure that that's formal and kind of allowed that they, they don't have to feel like they're the property cops, but yet still have the ability to also bring forward those concerns. So that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. On top of that, Craig, I just want to add to that. Um, after our last meeting, I had a landlord come up to me and say, we've got to do something to help him out with his tenants. And I told him, and this is, and I'm a landlord myself, to our landlords, you're responsible for your property. If your tenants put the mattress out there, it is not our responsibility as a city to remove it. To remove it. You are responsible for your tenants. I know that landlord got very upset with me, and I told him that last or three or four weeks ago when we had this discussion. But as a landlord, it's my responsibility to take care of my property, and let's keep our city looking nice. Okay, thank you. I have nothing. Um, the only thing that I will add is um, on Friday of this week, there is community transit is having an open house. Uh, so there will be a tour of the operations. It will be from noon to 4 p.m. And then the next day on Saturday is the statewide 
bus rodeo for all the statewide transits. This is the first time, correct me, John, or maybe someone else knows that obviously the first time it's ever been held in Marshall. I'm not no. sure if it's been held outstate in, in greater Minnesota in the past or not. So um, they put a lot of work in that. I know that starts with like an opening ceremony at eight o'clock in the morning and there'll be all kinds of buses and doing whatever they do at rodeos for buses so um, all day so where are they doing that people. at is that out at their facility no that that will be at smsu oh okay so the open house is at their facility on Casus street mm -hmm. and then the um, um the rodeo will be at smsu starting saturday morning eight o'clock with the opening ceremony there's actually quite a few people that will be in town specifically for this day in town Friday night and they're in town Saturday night so they're here for three days for, uh, for this, this event. Um, there was also a nice um, open house tour um, today. Some of the council I know was there at the United Community Action and um, you know it, it's always striking to me the a number of programs that they have that serve not only Marshall but Lyon County as well as in some cases, nine counties, and in some cases, um, um, a much larger area, a larger area. So a lot of expertise, and we're fortunate to have that resource in our community. With that, I'll move on to, um, oh yes, go ahead. Add one more thing on the, uh, for the bus rodeo, if you're out there, they will have simulators so you can try your own skill at driving a school bus or a bus of some sort, and if you do really well, and go get your CDL license. They're probably looking for somebody <laughs> hire. They really somebody. like retired people. You can get a job. They like retired people. <laughs> Bob, Not sure about my so driving busy. record. <laughs> so we won't talk about that. Okay, thank you, John. Um, Sharon, staff reports. Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, just a few items. The MMU did receive the the bids for the water softening project and uh, staff will likely meet next week and I believe the desire is for MMU to have a joint meeting with City Council to award that bid. There were two bids and one local bidder and I think the bids appear to be favorable. There is some contingency in architectural and engineering fees that get associated with that as well but uh, there'll be some discussion and hopefully we can get that uh, set up but it was good to have have a local bidder on that project uh, as well. The uh, I just want to follow up a little bit on restitution for the CVV case, and I appreciate Council Member Labatt following that and reporting that to the rest of the council, and specific to the July 29th date uh, when the the formal sentencing will occur. The City of Marshall will submit an in impact statement as well. Um, we, we plan to submit that to the county attorney's office so they have review in order to present, but we will be providing that impact statement and have the, have the mayor review prior to submitting it to the, to the county attorney. Briefly want to talk about League of Minnesota Cities. Um, always a, a good opportunity to connect with your peers and uh, find out what other communities are doing. You always learn something new. I, I wasn't able to attend the Friday session. I didn't have to, uh, to, to leave early. And um, my understanding from Kyle and Annette who were there is that the, the governor who did make a presentation did mention Marshall uh, a couple times in his presentation. And that was related mostly, I, my understanding is to our discussions with the MPCA commissioner and his drive to have state agency leads uh, being out state, not just being in the metro. And so we certainly, as we reported at the last meeting, had a, had a very productive meeting with MPCA and it was appreciated that the, the governor did, did mention the city of Marshall. Um, so I wanted to add that. And then finally, the City staff are working on the 2020 budget. I will email the council specific dates and the timeline uh, for your consideration. 
We are hoping to line up most of the budget work sessions uh, with city council meeting dates. We think just based on last year, we had some additional dates that we didn't need. And uh, we'll make sure that there is staff or a council availability for that. But uh, the initial budget reports were sent out on June 28th. We're requesting to have them back by July, July 22nd. And um, the July 23rd council meeting, we'd like to review capital improvement budgets. And then August 13th, which is kind of the preliminary discussion about the general fund and the overview of the entire budget is when we'd like to present that. Uh, we've got some favorable uh, increases in LGA. Uh, it is not as large as, as our county counties, but uh, nonetheless, it'll help a little bit alleviate some of the some of the impact on the budget. We uh, I think had a, about a two percent rate of growth. However, we'll have to see what the state um, the state Department of Revenue does with some state properties. Uh, our assessor has informed us that they've done some adjustment no fault of our own and really separate from the rate of growth, but that may have some impact on the overall overall rate of growth, which ultimately affects the tax rates. We'll have to take that into consideration as well. So um, I'll email out that specific timeline and make sure that there's availability for that. Are you referring to the railroad then or pipeline? Okay. And that's all I had for my report, Mr. Mayor. Any questions for Sharon? Thank you, Sharon. What? Thank you, Mayor and Council. A few things would be awfully nice if we could go four days without rain. <laughs> we have a lot of construction projects going on, and uh, we still seem to be on track for completion schedules, even though we've had an excessive amount of rain during construction. If you have any specific questions on any of them, I'd answer them. Uh, one item that will be coming forward to one of our committees soon is an issue that we've had with tall grass. Not our logo, uh, but tall grass. We have complaints and we have, um, we have an ordinance that says that grass can't be more than eight inches tall in the city of Marshall. Well, we've implemented that significantly differently over the last few years, uh, many years, uh, specifically for those who want to do haying. So let's say I have a large, subdivision uh, and and you don't really need to mow it down to residential uh, mowing levels but that's what our ordinance says and we have large areas and all say stone bridge and cars and uh, and parkways uh, two and three and any any place that uh, we've had typically heed areas. Well, we've got some typically hate areas or some typically not hate areas that are allowed to grow tall adjacent to residential properties. So the way that we've been looking at in the past couple of years is that the 10 to 15 feet behind the curb needs to be kept mowed. And I'm saying to below the eight inches. It has to do with visibility at corners. It has to do with uh, dead grass coming on, onto the curb lines and into the street. and uh, so, so generally, we require at least that buffer to be mowed. Well, that's not happening. So we send out letters. And they kind of say, go fly a kite. We're not going to do it. And we'll sue you if you come on our property. Well, I guess you have to do Because we, we do need to respect the residential property owners' wishes that live next to those types of areas. They, uh, there's there's two, inches, uh, two issues. One is noxious weeds, which we handle separately, and then just the height of the grass. So I'm just letting you know that there will, will be some discussion and probably go to committee for, to LNO for some discussion about grass that needs to be mowed, hay, mowed, that type of thing in the city. Uh, keep that in mind when you drive around so that 
when we start discussing it, you have some background of that. That's all I've got. Any question for Glenn? Glenn, um, you might want to make a comment about Commerce Park. You know, we, we did the, the crop plant lease, and um, it's um, surprising the uniformity of the crop emergence there. The question I have had is on the north side of Michigan Road, is there, and on the south side, it is planted right up to the curb. On the north side, it's back. Yes. But and is, is that going to be seeded down to something? Yes, it will. Now, there was a mistake made by the by the renter, and he put pre-emergence down on the north side the whole way. We were going to go in and seed it and mulch it the next day or the next, that week, and he put pre-emergence down. And so we couldn't do anything with it until, what, six weeks? Uh, so, so on the south side, he, he was not supposed to plant all the way up to the curb either. There was supposed to be that buffer. But he did. And is it going to control erosion and onto the street? Well, somewhat. Maybe, maybe the first few feet um, probably shouldn't have been planted, and we should have had some, some, uh, some mulch. And, and I protection I mean, but, but that's bubbles. that's why the north part it looks like about 20 30 right. feet that's black and that's the reason for it but the intent is to take care of that i am pleased with the vegetation that's coming mm -hmm. uh as well as our uh, we don't have to take care of weeds for the right. for the year no weeds coming. there's no weeds coming <laughs> and that's why so uh it, it it is essentially ready for development anywhere, anywhere out there. And it's also impressive that there's, I didn't see any ponding of water even this afternoon. We did have uh, ponding over the weekend after the two inch rain uh, in both ponds, but the one pond went down immediately. As a matter of fact, that all that water then goes through the Barrett Center ponding and drainage. That there's an issue there that we have to take care of because all of our ponding from the old Merritt Center site and the new Commerce Park all comes through that, that uh, drainage facility. So we're going to be proposing some additional uh, outlet for that tile. See, all of that drainage goes to the private 16-inch tile that goes north to the drainage ditch. And Who's, who's drains first? Well, none of it drains until it all goes down. So everything east of 59 um, in that area also comes through that tile. So we're going to try to do something to help drain those ponds that we're required to have down in 48 hours, but we've never had a problem there. Mr. Mayor, thank you. And kind of, kind of related, but not, and it came to mind when you brought up the Merritt Center Pond, I believe the fire department and, and uh, Minnesota West still use that pond for some of their training. So um, has that boat ramp been readdressed this year, do you know? It has not are been. You, are you aware of what's going on there? No. Okay. It's it's a DNR boat ramp yeah. with the concrete connected. At least the lowest three or four are disconnected and turned. Oh. So it, it actually creates a pretty good void. It would be on backing in, it would be on the driver's side or the south side of that boat landing. If you get a chance by there, just take a look at it. It's really treacherous. Will DNR repair it? I don't know, I have no idea. Yeah. And and I didn't. that isn't even an issue that I brought through Merritt. I just know that personally because we were doing some work out there doing some response equipment. Yeah. Didn't try to launch a boat, but if we tried, I, I don't think you'd be able to because I think the trailer would get hung up in the void. Mm -hmm on the ramp, so just a uh, FYI. They, they do use it though for merit training? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I believe so. Should I, be a I, maintenance I, item and we should be able to take care of it. Got it, thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Glenn? Dennis? Can't follow up on tall grass or drainage, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> uh, with that then, we'll move on to, uh, you have the administrative reports, any comments on those? If not, the information items as well as the upcoming meetings. Move we adjourn. Motion Second. by Craig, seconded by Second. Jim. Jim to adjourn this discussion. Ouch.
If not, we'll move to a vote. We're close to voting. Motion passes.